Alright mate, how's it going? In today's video, it's episode 4 of Lord of the Clans by Christy Golden. Let's go! Thrall's life continued to be a never-ending cycle of breakfast and training for several more years, but as he got older and his training started to pay off, he was actually allowed to step outside the fortress grounds for more training. Sergeant had suggested it, giving Thrall a bit more freedom would make him a better fighter or something, and Blackmore tentatively agreed to it, but only if he was chained to a boulder the entire time. However, the thought of escaping never once even occurred to Thrall. He was a slave, Blackmore was his master, Sergeant was his trainer, everything was exactly the way it was supposed to be. Also, during this part of his life, Thrall had frequently overheard the other men with whom he practiced gossip about orcs from time to time. Since they all thought of him as nothing but a mindless brute, they weren't exactly careful with their words around him. They often spoke of how the orcs were growing weaker, more and more being caught, rounded up and placed in internment camps. Those in charge of said camps all lodged here at Dernhold Keep, with Blackmore being the boss of all of them. However, Thrall had never actually seen an orc as far as he was aware, but now at the age of 12 years old, that was about to change. Sergeant called this particular scenario ringing. The other trainees were playing the part of men who had come upon one of the last remaining renegade orcs in the wild, chained to a boulder for some reason, and Thrall, obviously, was to play the part of the orc. Thrall didn't particularly like this scenario. He preferred one-on-one -on -one fighting, not being the target of sometimes up to 12 blokes at once, especially since they all had armor and real weapons, whilst he didn't didn't seem fair really, but it wasn't like he could do anything about it. So Thrall went ahead and got into character, snarling and acting all savage and stuff, just as Sergeant had told him to do it, and predictably, as was always the case with every group of recruits Thrall had ever practiced with, the first tactic this group chose was a simple straight on assault. But before Thrall could beat the shit out of every single one of them, a strange noise interrupted the fight. Thrall turned to see a small wagon approaching the fortress. Not exactly an unusual sight, saw that every day. But this wagon was not transporting farmers, or merchants, or new recruits. It was carrying monstrous green beasts. The sight of their grotesqueness filled Thrall with horror for a brief moment, before the truth hit him. These were orcs. These were his so-called people. This was what he looked like to everyone else. No wonder they hate him so much. I'm a goddamn monster, Thrall thought. One of the beasts within the wagon then seemed to notice Thrall, and stared at him for a bit, and then, out of absolutely bloody nowhere, the beast rose up, grabbed the bars of the cell, bent them with his bare hands, hopped off the wagon and started rushing directly towards Thrall. What? What? The beast kept running, yelling things that sounded like they might be words if you had a mouthful of dicks or something. Attack you fools! Sergeant rushed forward, as did the other recruits, but Thrall just kind of stood in place because he was chained to a boulder, but also because he had no idea what to do. This fearfully ugly thing was charging towards him. It was definitely an enemy, but it was also one of his own people. He didn't want to attack it. Sergeant and the trainees then fell upon the beast, knocking it down, and Thrall just stared at the flash of swords and axes, the chaos of it all, until it was over and all the men stood back to admire the pile of green and red flesh on the ground that had once been a living creature. Get Thrall back to his cell. Now. What in the name of all that is holy have you done? He was never supposed to see another orc. Oh, now he knows, damn it. What were you thinking? I was thinking, sir, that if you didn't want Thrall to see any other orcs, you might have told me that. Perhaps you might have arranged for the wagons carrying them to arrive when he was in his cell, sir. Well, the damage is done now. We must think how to repair it. So Thrall's never known what he looked like then? Never. No mirrors. No basins of still water. He's been taught that the orcs are scum, which is of course true. And that the only reason he's permitted to live is because he earns me money. Awkward silence then fell for a moment before Sergeant piped up again. So he knows. So what? Just because he was born an orc doesn't mean he can't be more than that. He doesn't have to be a brainless brute. If you encouraged him to think of himself as more human, he's not. He is a brute. I don't want him thinking of himself as some kind of green-skinned human. 
Then pray, sir, what do you want him to think of himself as? Blackmore had no response to that. He didn't bloody know. He'd never really thought about it. All he knew was that this was extremely frustrating. Everything had seemed so simple all those years ago, when he'd stumbled upon the little ugly orc baby. He could raise it as a slave, train it to fight, put it in charge of an army of captured beaten orcs and then attack the alliance with it, and become the most powerful man in the world. For all needs direction, and we shall give it to him. He's learned enough training with the recruits. I think it's time we relegated him exclusively to combat. Sir, he's very helpful in training. We have all but vanquished the orcs. Their leader Doomhammer has fled. They're a scattered race. Peace is descending upon us. We do not need to train the recruits to battle orcs any longer. Any battles they face in future will be against other men. Aedilus trailed off a bit, realising that he'd almost just said too much. Men at peace need an outlet for their bloodlust. Let us confine Thrall to gladiator battles. He can fill our pockets and bring us honour. More time passed, with Thrall's daily routine changing somewhat. Instead of training with new recruits, Thrall now took part in gladiator battles. Just as Aedilus just now said. But he was pretty good at gladiator battles, ascending through the ranks at phenomenal speed. He'd already reached his full height, and had gained quite a bit of bulk to his tall frame as well. To many, Thrall was the biggest orc they'd ever seen. But when he wasn't in the ring, he was still shut alone in his cell. A cell which felt like it had grown significantly smaller to Thrall. However, it was still his favourite place to be, because when shut alone in his cell, he could converse in secret with his best friend, Teretha. She regularly sent him books with notes hidden inside them, and in those notes, she described a world of art, of beauty, of companionship, a world that Thrall desperately wanted to see. The books Tari had sent were also rather interesting to Thrall. Books about orcs, for example, how they lived in small groups, with each one having their own customs and stuff. Which group had he come from, he wondered. Did he still have family out there? However, Thrall wouldn't allow those thoughts to stick around for very long. What was the point? It's not like he could tell Blackmore that he was tired of being a slave, that he wanted to leave. Oi, come on, time to go fight. I hear they've got quite the opponents for you today. Master Blackmore's ready to have your hide if you don't win. 